Hello, everyone. Welcome to Evening Devotions, Friday evening. And it's good to be with you all. And as always, um, for this week, we are joined by Michael Ochoa. And I'm so happy to be joined with Michael. So a, uh, something, I don't know if you, any of you noticed this, but there is uh, something that we're both have in common. We're both wearing a red shirt. <laughs> and funny thing is, we both said we don't wear red that often. And we did not plan this. So, but I thought, Michael, you shared why you wear red on Fridays. Do you mind sharing that? Yeah, it's um, something I saw online. I saw it on uh, Facebook a few times and and I decided to start doing it um, just to, it's red, is Red Friday. It, it's, they call it Red Friday and it's remember everyone deployed. And um, so it helps me remember to pray for people in our military, people, you know, that are still <clears throat> overseas fighting the war on terror and um, fighting in different places, defending America and, um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, protecting people, you know, so, um, so not just, I think, not just everyone deployed there, but I, it, lately it's been helping me remember people here too. So it just reminds me to pray for yes. people. And so when I look in the mirror, I see, oh, I'm wearing get this red. I'm not used to seeing myself in red. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's I wish I had as noble of a reason as you're wearing red. My reason for wearing red is it was at the top of my drawer. <laughs> <laughs> also, you chose this passage to look at today. Now, you know, one of the blessings that I get is I usually ask the person who is speaking to, uh, unless I have something really on my heart to choose the passage. And I'm always, it's always curious to find what type of passage the person chooses. And I just would have never guessed a passage from second Peter. So we're looking at second Peter, just curious. Why did you choose this passage? Mm, there's, Aside from Ephesians, I think, um, and Revelation, I think Second Peter is um, one of my favorite um, passages, uh, scripture books, because it um, he has an urgency in his writing, and um, and the, it, you get it from the beginning, from like the first chapter. But this urgency, kind of that, from that urgency with the gospel, it just kind of flows, and it's and I really feel it like culminates in this in this um, because of all of these things, because of you know, we have God's word and everything. It's so a uh, sure word, a uh, confident word that we have um, in Christ, you know, then how should we live, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really, mm -hmm. for me, it's always been challenging, you know, mm -hmm. every verse and chapter has challenges to the believer. And mm -hmm. so it, um, it's always been a challenging and um, one that's always encouraged me to, to keep my eyes focused on the mm -hmm. end and focused on the cross, focused on following Christ, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just, uh, and keep really keep pushing for him in everything, mm. everything I do. So well, that's good too. Is, well, there's, I'm not Luke chapter two, but I'm um, a passage in Luke um, as well. So, yeah, no, yeah. that's excellent. Yeah. Do you mind as always praying for us and then reading the passage verses 11 through 20? Oh, sure. Yes. Let's pray. Um, uh, gracious father, we thank you so much for you're just wonderful love for us, Father. We thank you so much for the mercy that you uh, that we see every morning, Father. New mercies, um, just grace flooding our lives, Father. And I pray that you give us eyes to see it, eyes to see your presence, eyes to see your hand in our lives, eyes to see even spiritual growth. Where I know um, that I know there's times where many may not even feel like they're growing or they're, they're um, trying, they're reading scripture, they're doing things, and, uh, but yet, Father, they can feel like stagnant. But I pray, Father, that you would um, just make these evidences of grace, of your grace in our lives, uh, Father, evident uh, to us that we would see it, that we would even recognize the smallest bit of growth, and Father, that we would be encouraged uh, by that, by you working in our lives, working and changing us, transforming us, and conforming us, Father, mm -hmm. into the image of your Son. Um, Father, we uh, thank you for your word. I thank you that it's um, unchanging, that, Father, your word is 
forever settled in heaven, Father, that not, mm-hmm. none of it, that heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. And Father, these words proclaim to us our great need uh, for your son. And Father, they point us to him. Uh, they, they call us to, to him. Father, they show us you there with open arms, calling us to repent daily, even as believers, uh, Father, living a life of repentance, living a life that, um, that, uh, that needs you. Uh, Father, every hour we need you. And so we mm-hmm. thank you, Father, for, for that. Thank you for your gracious uh, and merciful love toward us through Christ. And uh, Father, I, again, even as we looked at our church tonight, I do pray for those. I pray for those um, that are serving our country, uh, mm-hmm. Father, in so many different ways, in the military, deployed, far from their families for uh, maybe their fourth term, fourth tour, um, in some distant place, Father, that... Um, that we not forget about them. That uh, mm-hmm. Father, and I pray that wherever they are, Father, that your gospel would be reaching yes. and um, okay. into their lives, Father, that they would be called uh, to a greater faith in Christ, um, even as they serve and defend our country and its interests. I pray as well, Father, for those on the front line of this pandemic, too. I know that um, every day um, it's like being deployed, going into unknown situations and uh, Father, I pray for them all, the first responders and those um, just uh, even serving in our community in different ways um, that you would bless, that you protect them and and help them, Father, as they help those who desperately need uh, healing and need uh, your care. And uh, But I pray, Father, in, in every instance, uh, Father, that in, in some way you would be calling them uh, to Christ. And uh, we know that that is your heart, that they all would know you. And, know, and, and come to Christ. So we pray, Father, um, for that, but we pray that you bless them and, and uh, help us to remember that as, as we go through our day. So, Father, we ask that you bless our time tonight in your word. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So if you could read verses 11 through 20. Sure. Yes. Um, Second Peter chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 11. Um, Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent and to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. <clears throat> there are some things in them that are hard to, to understand, <clears throat> which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. 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 So as always, we always start out with a uh, just a general overview. What are your thoughts about the passage overall. And I know you read this, especially in the context of the whole of chapter three. And so any thoughts, quick thoughts from you? Oh, quick thoughts. Yes. I, um, and when I look at this, I just can't help, but I mean, I get excited at it. Um, Mm -hmm. because I mean, he's really, I mean, it's, it seems grim, I think for a lot of, in a lot of ways for Mm. think about the end of the world you know that, mm-hmm. that all of these things right that uh, the heaven and the earth that all these things are going to be dissolved um, right you know it's like it's it, you know i know i can imagine i know for me even as a y- young believer that was hard to comprehend you know even hard to like wow that's kind of scary even you know that that all mm-hmm. of this but all of this must pass away for the new heavens and new earth to come you know, and it's actually a good thing, you know, the scary mm. part about it is, are we ready, you know, and I think mm. that is what I think the believers, Paul Peter really challenges with uh, the believers with is like the sense of 
that it is coming and are, mm-hmm. are you ready? How are you going to be living? You know, and, and for me, that theme not only resides here, but I think I get it from the beginning of the mm-hmm. of second Peter in uh, chapter one, when he even talks about his own, um, his own death um, that we felt like was coming very soon, you know, mm-hmm. so there was this urgency and urgency with mm-hmm. not just with this, um, with those passages early on, but even here, you know, that they get this, they really come away with understanding this. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I think whenever we're, uh, very similar to you, whenever we're thinking about the future, um, mm-hmm. the coming of Christ, it's, it's just a real test of, do we believe the, the eternal hope that we have in Christ and that that's not a mythology, but it's it's a it's a matter of fact. Yeah. And is it something that guides and shapes the way that we think, what we place our hope in, what our treasures are, or do we think this is it? And this is a time to really weigh and consider those things because one, you begin to realize what is most important. You know, those things that we chased after maybe. Uh, whether it was material good, certain types of securities, possessions, all those things in this moment, in this season, even travel experiences, that's all gone. And one of the things that I've been reading a lot about is people saying, it's not going to be the same after we are done with this. Even if everything's done, for example, when people go back to restaurants, it, it's not going to be the same as the way it used to be. You're, we were very carefree and yeah. And people are going to be a lot more wary, cautious. You know, how many of you are going to go back to a restaurant? How long will it take for you to feel free to do that? Or will you continue doing what you're doing? And then a lot of these restaurants are going out of business. And so therefore, there just aren't going to be as many choices. Remember, there were tons of places you could go to. Yes. Yeah. And now, I mean, who knows what it's going to be like, um, whether you're going to be able to travel freely, uh, what vacations are going to look like. Um, yeah. So there's just so many things that are up in the air. And I think in many ways, Peter is calling us to that regardless of virus or no virus, yeah. you know, pandemic or no pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I really, I agree. I mean, it, he is really calling us to consider things in a very different light, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and like you said, I mean, this whole idea that, you know, things are not going to be the same. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're absolutely not, you know, I think, um, you know, we're not going to be the same, um, in the way we appreciate things. I know personally, I'm not going to be the same in the way I appreciate fellowship and our time together, mm. you know, in church. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I wait for that day, you know, yes. and like I, I've been telling, I don't know, people and Angie and my DG, it's like this, this isolation being apart from each yes. other, it makes yes. me, not just for this, but for heaven, you know, for yes. the, the ending, the time where nothing's going to separate us from the love of God. Nothing's going to separate us at that time from being mm. able to worship him and to praise him together. I mean, and mm. really that is, I mean, for, I know for me, it's one of the best times of the week, you know, mm. to be in church the, together, mm-hmm. yes. praising God. And, yes. and I know for a lot, it's a lot of work, you know, but for me, mm-hmm. it, it, when it all comes together, it's like, um, mm-hmm you know, everybody that's worked so hard, it's like we reap mm. that mm. harvest together. And um, mm-hmm. I really, makes me look forward to that time. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I, I think, might give people hugs more, Michael. What's that? I might give people hugs more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. You know, Let me I, ask you something. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, go I, ahead. I was just going to say, um, I was just going to go to the text and ask you this question. Okay, so in verse 10, it says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed since all these things are thus to be dissolved. And that word dissolved, it comes in twice, almost back to back in verse 10, verse 11. It's the word luo in the Greek, which basically means to destroy everything's gonna be destroyed like it's not just that dissolve is sort of a really nice way to put it you know it's but when you hear 
dissolve versus destroy. Destroy just sounds a lot worse, you know, a lot more. Or I think the way it's, it, it could be, a, it breaks up, breaks apart. Um, everything will be that was bound will be loosed. It will come yeah. apart. It'll, you know, so when uh, Jesus talks about in Matthew 18, everything, whatever is uh, loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven, you know? And so the idea that all the, so the heavenly bodies being destroyed essentially is basically saying our world is going to come apart. Um, when Jesus comes again, the world that we know it, the old heavens and the old earth are going to be completely pulled apart, and destroyed. Yeah. And Paul describes in Romans eight, the idea that this creation is groaning right from the point where sin entered into the world to the point where Jesus returns <clears throat> in that in-between period, there's a groaning creation. It, it's, it's not just, it will be pulled apart. It is being pulled apart. It is being dissolved. And, you know, I was thinking about that and thinking we, here we are, it's so easy to place your hope in something that clearly Peter saying this is not going to last. You know, this is, why do you feel like we place so much hope into something that we know if we're a Christian, at least for a non-Christian, they don't, they wouldn't see this. Right. But for a Christian, we say, yes, this is true. But yet we so quickly go back to our vomit. You know, we so quickly go back, back to, putting our hope and our treasures into what we know is going to be destroyed it will not last. Yeah. Why do, why do we do that? And how do we not do that? Yeah. The, I think the question as to why is, I think um, one is, I think one is that one is we long for home. Um, I think just we, everyone longs for a home. I think it's part of who we are. I think it's part mm -hmm. of like how God made us that we long for a permanence in things. We long for a place that, that, that where we belong and home, mm -hmm. like when we have a physical home um, that we can get settled in, you know, and mm -hmm. feel like that this is mm -hmm. it. And yes. Scenery. And there's, and there's nothing, we can enjoy the scenery. We can look at mm -hmm. all of creation and say, even as Christians and say, this is good. God meant this to be good. And God provided the means for this house and all of these things, but he didn't mean for it to be, the end for us, you know, and that's where we can, we can, we can lose sight of that end. And, and you think about Abraham and you think about those, you know, even like the Israel, you know, Israel, it was, you know, he had Abraham always traveling, always mm. moving, you know, and even the people of Israel always mm -hmm. moving, you know, for 40 years, you know, because yes. teach them that there wasn't, this home isn't going to be, their new home isn't going to be like their old home, you know, it's not yes. going to can be very different and that mm -hmm. their abiding place was never meant to be necessarily the land but god himself mm -hmm. he was to be their abiding place you know and i think right. when we if we don't have that understanding you know i think if we don't really understand that or even believe that as christians that then we and see this in god's word you know then then we can feel like and we can suddenly think this is my home you know mm -hmm. and when Christ says, you know, this, my kingdom's not of this world. Mm -hmm. If it were, mm -hmm. I would fight, you know, for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. fight, but, you know, if his kingdom isn't of this world and I, I'm his, then my kingdom's not of this world. And mm -hmm. we fight of that, you know, and that's how we can become, I think, entangled in the affairs of this mm -hmm. world, which I think Christians do have a place. You know, I think we have a place in civil governments on, on boards and different mm -hmm. things to be salt and light while we're here. But, but to feel that this is the end all and to, to get mm -hmm. that in our minds, I think that that's a big temptation. I know it's mm -hmm. one for me too. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, and I, I mm -hmm. struggle with it. Like I mentioned before, I want a home in the country. I want, you know, a place where I can bow hunt and, mm. you know, and do these things. But I, and at the same time, uh, one of my first pastors, you know, he reminded me this. He's like, you know, we're here. I'm, I'm here to make disciples, you know, mm. you know, as a, as a, as a new creation in Christ. You know, I'm called to love my family, but but primarily to serve him and to make disciples. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. really has, for me, that has an end, you know, mm -hmm. that is looking at this day, the day of the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, as, as really that. And so, I, yes, you know, I think it's that, I, you know, and um, Matthew 24 is one of my favorite passages, too. And that's where, you know, 
I think Christ challenges everyone, you know, to be looking for his coming, to be waiting mm-hmm. and watching, you know, and, um, and it's like, and for me, that's always, it's really stuck, you know, and I'm not one to sit there and say, okay, we can know the time or the, you know, any of that, or, you know, and, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, what, what type of second coming it's going to be, you know, I have my, you know, I believe it's, you know, and, in a, um, you know, what all millennial, you know, mm. but it's more, but it's like, but I believe it's imminent, you know, I mm-hmm. think this coming could happen, you know, and I believe it's, um, and that helps me, that shapes me and it encourages my heart with, and how I talk to my kids, the things we talk about, you know, and even like, I, w- I want to talk about Star Wars with my kids and talk about this, you know, things that are fun, but, but for me, they know this too, that, you know, in the end, it's like I want them to really get these things and understand these things. Mm-hmm. Whether it be the coming of the Lord or whether it be, you know, just sickness or COVID or something else that um, that that takes me, um, that the Lord uses to to bring me to Himself, then you know, I don't I don't set that time and day. He sets that, and, mm-hmm. and uh, so He's in control, mm-hmm. and I I trust that. But, but there's an urgency. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, was looking at this word, so the concept of holiness here, because he says, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? Meaning, if we actually believe that this world is being destroyed, that this world is passing away, then if I believe that, how should I live distinctively different knowing that truth to be the case. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the word holiness, what's interesting is that holiness generally means to be set apart. So we're meaning that we are set apart for God. We live as though we are his. And so our perspective is, is radically different. We have an eternal perspective that gives us a lot of hope, but that's distinct from, I, I sort of wanted to take it from the concept of you know, there's a holiness for God, but there's also a holiness for the world, meaning, and I'm using that literally, meaning to be set apart for the world. Mm-hmm. That is to say that when you think that this world is your greatest treasure and you live for it, you are holy from a worldly perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the opposite of being holy for God. You're either set apart for God or you're set apart for the world. When you're set apart for God, you believe that God, the new heavens and the new earth is our eternal home. And so therefore, this is not everything where we're living in. Whereas if you're set apart for the world, this world is your home and it's everything to you. And I was, uh, it's just funny, I was um, reading an article today in the news about uh, these billionaires who have bought these COVID bunkers and they've set up these underground COVID bunkers and they have pictures of them. I mean, they're just, they're better than a lot of our most homes, you know, yeah. above ground. I mean, you should see they have food stacked up. They have their own uh, gun range. Wow. And they have like indoor pools and they're all heated and food stacked up everywhere and like the, just everything that you could imagine, right? And what was interesting about this, they said they call it a COVID bunker, not because they're afraid of the virus but they're afraid of people's reactions to the virus. Mm. Meaning everyone's gonna go crazy. They're gonna, you know, just um, try to kill each other. And I just think that's what it means to be holy to the world. You know, that you are so consumed with this being everything that you would rather live in a bunker by yourself. No matter how big a bunker is, it's still a, it's still a prison, you know, and, and yet, no matter how nice our homes are, but if we have to live in our homes and not see anyone for the rest, we're still imprisoned. Yeah. This is not our home. I mean, so Peter's saying, you have to choose. Do you really believe that this is everything for you? Or if you really believe that God's eternity and his, the new heavens and the new earth is my true home, then it should change the way that I live and my priorities, the things that I think, the way that I utilize my resources, my money, my time, my efforts, that if I'm living as though I am, this is everything, then it's going to really impact, you know, how I live 
or what I think about and whether I really believe that there is a new heavens and a new earth as my true eternal home. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think so. I, it reminds me, like I said, back in that, the, that there's a passage, I believe it's in, uh, Luke. Um, let me look at this real quick. It's, I believe it's Luke uh, 16. Um, and it's, it was, it, this was a passage that challenged me for a while. And trying to understand it, and um, and it's one of a steward, like of an unjust steward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, Luke sixteen. Steward is like called to do. Um, is it okay if I read it real quick? Yes. Um, well, we don't have a lot of time. Maybe not yeah. reading the whole passage. You might want to just summarize it, and yeah, maybe maybe yeah, read one or two verses. That um, he is. He he ends up knowing that he's going to be terminated for the way that he. Mm -hmm. has his master's business. And so knowing mm -hmm. that the end was near, mm -hmm. he to sell and he, he went to people that went to the owner and said, hey, look, how much do you owe? And they said, okay, half that. And he, so he mm -hmm. made mm -hmm. with all of these people, yes. you know, to, to um, because he knew he wanted to be, be able to go somewhere when he lost his employment. He was looking mm -hmm. that. And, and in the end, the master commends the guy for his shrewdness because he, he saw the end coming and he got ready for it, you know, and he leveraged all of his resources, you know, for that means, you know, so that he would have a place to go dwell, you know. And mm -hmm. so, and Jesus says, tells the disciples something interesting. He says, you should be like this, you know, you should, you know, when it comes to like looking and considering your goods, you know, how the material things you have, your possessions, your goods, your time, everything, leverage them so that you will be received like this, mm. this unjust steward was, you know, but that you, that we would be received the same way. And I really mm -hmm. feel like this is that same type of call and it challenges us to think the same way. It's like, how should I live? Well, how should I use my time? Knowing that all these things are going to be dissolved, that even that we have this, my garden could be dissolved tomorrow and I'm putting mm -hmm. a lot of time in it. And yes, it's good. And, you know, and, and it teaches me a lot about God and his goodness, but even that's going to be dissolved. There's going to be an end to it. And mm -hmm. so my time needs to be more balanced and weighted, you know, when it comes to, mm -hmm. and even when it comes to like the time I spend with my kids, yeah, we could be spending it, you know, doing sports and baseball and, you know, jujitsu and a lot of good things, not necessarily bad things, but, you know, but my time that is limited and what, what, what should it be focused on? If these things are going to be dissolved, how should I use that time? Mm -hmm. How should I use my money? You know, what should mm -hmm. my money be? I, I think of uh, at the end of Schindler's list, um, and that one of the final scenes where he's standing there with all the people that he rescued and he is, you know, and he's confronted with all these faces and people are so thankful to him, but he's, he's walking toward his car and he has to escape Germany because he wants, he's going to be arrested himself for making this military factory mm -hmm. that made uh, equipment for the German army. Um, he, he turns and he looks at them and he looks at the ring on his finger and he says, I could have saved one more, you know, mm. I could have, you know, I looks at his jacket and his pin on his lapel and he says, I could have done even more, you know, and because now he saw, sees the end that he made, that he made it through, that these people made it through. And he says, I could have done more, you mm -hmm. know, and I think this, for me, this passage and all, many of them like it, challenge me the same way and say, mm. how are you using your time? You know, are, how are you living? You know, are you living a life mm -hmm. that is holiness? you know, holiness is good, you know, it's, it's good living, it is, it's, you know, and it's out of a, you know, there's people would want to practice like an asceticism type of life, you know, and um, like, you know, and really, but not necessarily in a way that would maybe be honoring to God, but a holiness that, that looks at purity and saying, you know, by living this way, I can actually do more, you know, I can, serve more people and love more people because it does cause us holiness without love isn't holiness you know and, and 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 that's really what it is love is actually this outflow of holiness and any any holiness that doesn't have love this love to help people to to move on and 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 get in people's lives and and to care about them and point them to the same eternity that we're all looking at isn't holiness at all you know so out of this you see i mean it's really calling us to 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 live with great zeal, you mm. know, and looking at this end and saying, there's, there's a time limit. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. when it is. And mm -hmm. I, I only have so many days of my life. I don't know, even know how long that is. I can't say, but whatever I'm going to do it, I want to use it 
as much as I can and leverage as much as I can from God, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Really, one really thing. Like yes. Okay. Yes. No, one thing I really see is um, a key to this idea of having that eternal perspective is the idea of waiting. I mean, we see this three times in verse 12, waiting for and hastening, verse 13. Uh, But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth. And then verse 14, therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent. And in other words, there's an anticipation. And that's how you really know that you're waiting for uh, that that there is a eternal perspective is there's an anticipation for it. It's very much as though you you're eagerly um, wanting something to happen. We're eagerly waiting to gather together as a church again, yeah, you know, yeah. physically. And with that same sort of idea, do we wait for and long for Jesus's return? where John ends the book of Revelation with Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. There's a a real anticipatory feeling towards wanting the day of the Lord, the hastening of the day. Another thing about that is that that I thought was interesting, verse 12, (laughs) waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, which is interesting because here's the thing. Um, It's not in our passage, but it is in the previous verses. In verses eight through nine, it says this, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So remember that time for God is vastly different than the way that we understand time. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So God the reason why he doesn't just enact judgment immediately is because he's gracious. Yeah. He's slow to fulfill judgment so that as many people could turn to Christ before that judgment comes. And I believe we talked, either we talked about this or maybe Dave and I talked about this, but um, I think it's Martin Lloyd Jones. He talks about the fact that grace is not, oh no, no, I'm sorry. It's not Lloyd Jones. It's uh, R.C. Sproul. He says, grace is not unlimited. Grace is absolutely limited. It's not, not unlimited. It's unlimited in the sense that the extent of grace is to, it, the call is to everyone. It's not like, oh, you have to be wealthy or you have to be educated. It's to the whole world. But once judgment happens, it's not as though God will say, oh, okay, it's okay. Right. Yeah. Once judgment happens, grace is now done. And now yeah. it's going to be um, you either trusted in Christ or you didn't. And you do not want to wait for that day. You do not want to wait for that day to happen where you finally turn to Jesus. But know that verses eight through nine says there's a, uh, there's a, a real patience. There's a waiting, right? It, but here's the thing. In the patience, Peter then says, but you should wait, but you should also hasten. You should want it to actually happen fast, right? And I think that's the very interesting combo is that on the one hand, you have patience. And on the other hand, you have hastening. hastening. And they're not contradictory to each other. That Christians can, can't wait for Jesus to come, but we also don't want him to come for the sake of others because we still want others. So Paul says, you know, I want to depart and be with the Lord in Philippians one, but I also realize I need to stay and be with you. Right. And, and that the two aren't contradictory. You can have both, which is I want as many people to turn to Christ as possible, but I also want Jesus to come. And that, that combo and that type of anticipation is exactly what it means to have that vision, that eternal perspective of what it means to follow God to long for him, to trust in him. What do you think? Oh, I agree. I agree completely. And I agree. I mean, it's like, and that hastening, right? I mean, there's this waiting part of like, like, okay, Lord, we're going to wait and we're going to live and we're going to, you know, make disciples and we're going to do those things. But I think in, in doing that, we do hasten, you know, I think there is that part where we, we do Mm -hmm. look forward to it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we anticipate it. I mean, just like a child would, 
you know, when the, when a father comes home from a, a long trip, you know, a child yes. is happy. And it's like, and, and I remember, um, uh, you know, uh, Spurgeon talked about in one of his sermon illustrations, like the dogs, uh, you know, ba- ba- you know, they just yelp and, you know, bay when they hear the, the carriage coming down the road of their master to get excited. And it's that same type of excitement, you know, that, that I think that we should have, you know, at the end mm. of it, you know, and but I think the hastening part of it is kind of interesting because I looked at it and I was looking at that too. And I was like, so there is this active part that we play in the unfolding mm-hmm. of yes. the plan, you know, yes. and we're yes. not sovereignly in control of that, but, but there's an active participation in, in yes. and, yes. um, and I think in, in revelation, um, in revelation chapter six, you know, verse nine, you know, there's, I think a, a key part there and it, it talks about a martyrs actually being slain, you know, and, and their, and their, their blood, and their, their prayers coming up from underneath the altar, going up to God. And they say, you know, Lord, how long before you, uh, you know, bring vengeance upon those that have has slayed us for your testimony. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and the Lord gives them a white robe and he says, wait a little longer until the mm-hmm. full number of you, those, your brothers who, who were also to be killed, you know, is reached until that number is reached. And it's like, mm-hmm. and I thought, wow, that's an interesting thing. You know, it's like, there's this waiting that God's waiting until this certain numbers reach of people that are being killed for the testimony of, mm-hmm. of, him, of Christ. And, and I thought, how does that happen? You know how that happens when we go out and tell the Yes, God. yes. It's not just us, whether we go to yes. a land or whether it yes. happens someday in America or wherever. Else, yes. But that people are slain for the testimony of the son, you know, and it's like, and so we hasten as believers this when we build the church, when we edify it, we teach you know, disciples to make disciples, you know, and yes. you know, the uttermost parts of the earth, you know, with the Great Commission, you know, I, I yes. believe in doing that, we hasten it, you know, we, yes, we, we yes, in that, that return, you know, yes, yes. I don't know if you, um, first of all, I absolutely agree with you. Matthew 24 14 is a key part of that, and this gospel, this testimony will be preached to all nations, and then the end will come, right? And yeah that the gospel and that's classically been thought of as the the missiological verse of saying that every people group will have an opportunity to hear the gospel yeah and because of that that number you know just um i'm going to share a screen with you but there was a um have you heard about this woman who she was a missionary um aviation uh fellowship pilot she was american missionary Asian American. She actually, I mean, she went to MIT. She was very, very gifted. She actually went to the seminary that I went to and she died uh, just, I think, a couple of days ago, 40 years old, sharing the gospel, bringing uh, remote supplies to different people in Indonesia and doing COVID-19 tests for the sake of Christ, you know, and, and her plane crashed. And I mean, there are so many instances like this, but we hear about it more and more and more of people and not, I mean, that's just a person who is known, but there are how many people who are believers in different parts of the world who are, who are dying for the sake of Christ. Yeah. And you're right that there is a, the the proclamation of the gospel to the ends of the earth, to all peoples of all tongues, tribes, nations, ethnicities, which is really a, a real, um, just a real, uh, fist against racism you know I mean yeah. there's no place for it when you think about uh, what it means that we're all saved by one blood <laughs> you know yeah. we're one in Christ saved by one and one Lord one Savior one baptism and from every tribe tongue and nation gathering around the slain lamb worshiping him yeah. and if we have that idea that thought, how it should drive the way that we think, the way that we um, consider what is most important in our lives. Yeah. yeah. So fully affirm it, what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. Yeah. Article. It just happened like a couple of days ago. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Um, so another thing is that, uh, you know, it says, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. 
And the melting of heavenly bodies in the Bible, in Isaiah 34, 4 and other places, is always a symbol of God's coming judgment, that it's going to come. And that phrase is so interesting, that they will melt as they burn. And the question that I have for us and for just anyone listening is, do you and I, do we live as though everything's going to burn? Or do we cling to what is going to burn? I mean, everything's going to burn. All these things that we look around and we own, if we place our hope, if we cannot, like, do we get really <laughs> angry when someone, maybe a, a husband or wife is driving, scratches your brand new car and you're just, just so angry, you know, or your child is carrying your expensive camera, drops it, breaks the lens, thousand dollars, gone, right? And, and it's just, does that, do we understand that this is going to burn? Everything's going to burn. You know, like, how do we live? What do we, do we live that way? I think that's something that we need to really consider. What are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. I think when we, when, with that in mind, I mean, I know that, and I've learned a lot of this and seen your own testimony, your own, how you live um, and your family as well. I mean, holding on to things loosely, you know, and, um, and really not clinging to things you know i mean it, like i know i've seen like when you you give or let people borrow things it's like you're like letting go of it completely you know i mean and, and i I, you know, I know it's like it, it's hard to do it's hard to do that kind of thing we wrestle with the flesh it's like oh, well, what if i need this you know and um and it, yet you you do it and so you know but it's that kind of it's that idea you know to hold on to, to this world like it is going to go you know and mm -hmm. not, not just that but our money everything mm -hmm. Is going yes. to go, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, and, yes. it, and it really causes you know us to think, you know, and even myself, you know, even with this virus, I, I can say, you know, I've been challenged in my giving, um, you know, to you know, even in things that I, you know, it's like I, I want to give, but then I, you know, I hear of a need and I'm like, oh, wait, I have, I have that, you know, and I can give it, you know, and then I'm then then I realize it's my last one or something. And I'm like, mm. wait a second. In my, and in my, and at that, at that point, I do battle with my heart. I mean, mm -hmm. I say, I mean, really, I, I'm going to, I mean, and I'm not going to let that part of my heart win. That mm. old, you know, man mm. that's coming up and saying, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's that golem inside of me, you know, that one <laughs> holding on to this, this ring. And I'm like, no, it's like, no. And my, I actually tell my heart, give you know, mm. and let go. And, but it's that same idea. It's like, you know, we, these things mm. were meant to be given. These things mm. were, that were given was meant to be given, you know, mm. it was meant to be given, hold on mm. to everything loosely. Um, keep this in mind, you know, keep this in mind, you know, just like Peter says, you know, it's like mm -hmm. seeing all this is going to be dissolved. How are you going to mm -hmm. live? You know? Mm. It's like, you know, and doing that, that battle with our hearts and, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's been mm -hmm. a good lesson. And so, and I've been listening. I mean, for me, it's like, it's hard, but it's like listening to that voice to give, you know, there's so many voices out, you know, that are calling, you know, for people that need help and different things. And it's like, but listening to that voice that says, give, you know, give, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing the Lord say, you know, trust me, trust me, you know, and yes, I, and he's good. Yeah. Oh, he's so good. Yes. You know, he's so good. Yes. So Michael, if it was give, 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 just give, that's one thing. Not that we shouldn't, because if the Lord's calling us to, we should do it. Yeah. But if you look at verse 13, there's a promise, actually. It's not, oh, trust that everything's going to burn. It's, but according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells, yeah. in which we are perfectly righteous. This new heavens and new earth. Now, here's the thing is that, I think one thing that we don't fully grapple with, or maybe we, we just don't understand, not to its fullest, is the idea of how significant it is that the perfect righteousness of Christ indwelling in us, in the new heavens and the new earth, no longer is there a battle of flesh and spirit. Yeah, That's right. gone. Yeah. Instead, we always walk mind, heart, soul, body, knowing the perfect righteousness of Christ. 
and we, we walk it legally, which we already have now, but we walk it morally. We walk it, you know, in every way. And I just think one thing for sure is that when you're physically not doing well, it's hard spiritually. When you're not doing well spiritually, it's hard physically. When you're not doing well emotionally, it's hard physically and spiritually. And the three are always intertwined. But imagine a place where no more strife, no more striving, not striving for the things that are futile and are that, as uh, Genesis 3 reminds us, that is it leads to a lot of frustration. Relationships have frustration. Work has frustration. Government has frustration. Um, the, just the ground that we till has frustration. Nothing works exactly the way it should. Everything takes the sweat of our brow, you know, the anxiety, the stress, this sense of death and suffering and disease and the, the, our bodies breaking down slowly, our hair falling out, you know, our skin sagging, our, you know, our, just our body just not reacting the way that it used to. Our mind, my eyes are not seeing well. My ears are slowly going, you know, and the list is endless. Our teeth are not getting as healthy as it should be. And that's just the physical stuff. And then tack on relationships and all your own sinfulness. If we were to just have that all gone forever, it, it, it would be, it's just unimaginable. It's unthinkable what it's going to be like. So what the, Peter's saying, hey, live today as though everything's going to burn. Make sure, even if there's, even if you lose your life, like you said, the martyrs. Yeah. But he's not saying martyr yourself and for eternity you're going to be miserable. But it's, but according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth, a physical place where we're going to be with our physical glorified body, where there's going to be perfect righteousness indwelling where there is no more tears, no more sorrows, where there's no death, you know, no suffering and, and emotionally, spiritually, everything perfectly works. And this sense of satisfaction is going and going. And it's just, oh, we're always being over like a waterfall of satisfaction and joy unspeakable over and over. This is the promise. This is what we're living for. Yeah. What do you think about that? It, it really, I mean, yeah, you're, it, it really is, you know, and I, you said it, I mean, all those things are unimaginable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't um, imagine, you know, just struggling with, you know, sin uh, my whole life. And then, you know, and then be, being a believer and having a lot of addictions removed and other things mm -hmm. gone, you know, and mm -hmm. again, then dealing with issues of the heart, um, you know, and, and this sin that, that, um, that, you know, and that, it's just like it, it, it bound me in me and it's like um i know that he that is in me is stronger than he that's in the world you know mm -hmm. i know that he's overcome those things and he's and he's made a way for me to escape you know sin but yet it's still it's there you know ever present every day and imagine a world that is not touched by it you know where there is no more grief mm -hmm. you know where there's going to be no more phone calls like so and so passed mm -hmm. away and you know and mm -hmm. like, right died or you know this so uh, this child here is born or you know new stories about people being abused and killed mm -hmm. and crashes mm -hmm. and, you know i mean all of these things yes imagine a world like that it's like it's almost unheard of. you know mm -hmm. it's like it, it's no like, it's, it is unheard of and even my um you well know, even, it's heard of here but <laughs> yeah just but even pain you know just the daily pain of getting old and uh, i'm you know and on the funny side it's like i I um barely ever do I can get something I can watch a YouTube video I can you know do like a home repair project I can have all the right parts and still it doesn't work right I mean it still doesn't so <laughs> yes. nothing is ever easy and I always tell you know, <laughs> me like you like the big size and she's like what's wrong and it's like nothing ever goes easy. <laughs> yes and I had yes. one thing that went really easy once and and even then the nozzle is bad i mean it's like <laughs> you know those little spray nozzles on the windshield broke and yes you know, and I, I watched a youtube video bought the parts that this where it went together in minutes but then the nozzle sprays like this this like somebody squirting a squirt gun right on your under the um 
windshield and it doesn't spray everywhere so you have <laughs> one area that gets wet but everywhere else doesn't get wet so i have to do it over you know but it's totally and church easy. buildings aren't easy either no, michael nothing is easy right? <laughs> building permit park but we do look forward to that righteousness you know we look forward mm -hmm. to a heaven a new heaven and new earth that's filled with righteousness and and i just and i look forward i mean for me personally it's like you know, people, I, I think people, I think of heaven and it's like amazing. It's going to be mm. incredible. There's nothing that we can even, we can't even fathom it because mm -hmm. I don't think we, we can even, you know, imagine, I mean, just imagine how perfect, how good and incredible everything is going to be, you know, in this new heaven and new earth, the, the world that's unaffected by the curse of the fall. Mm. And the center is is Christ, you know, mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. me, that's the best part, you know, mm. I tell people this, I, you know, with, with, and so even talking with my kids, you know, I, it's like, you know, if, if you don't, if you, it's so easy to think of heaven, but if you don't have a true affection for, for Christ, mm -hmm. it'll be hell, even if you, right, <laughs> you're, you're yes. not going to want to be there because he's the center of it. He's the light of it. He is, you know, the, and, and he's worthy. And, then, you know, all of those aspects of things we see in Revelation, it's like, oh, I long for that. I want that so badly, mm -hmm. you know, to be there with him, uh, worshiping him, you know, this new heaven and new earth, to see what he's done, to, to glory him, you know, glorify him for his new creation. I, I, I mean, we stand at the edge of the Grand Canyon. There's a family with when Caleb, our last trip to New Mexico together. And, um, and it was incredible. Even though it was raining, we're still looking at it and we're like, wow this is just a, a, amazing incredible and you know, we couldn't help to praise god you know when we saw it and we see the mm. night sky and different things and we praise god for it and you know creation it's you know amazing the you know but and um the things but to see him do this to create a new heavens new earth and you know and it, it's mm -hmm. going to be spectacular and i think yes draw our praises for the you know so yeah I'm going to skip the, the middle part of verses because, I mean, not that it's not important. It's actually very important, verses 15, 16, because we almost don't have enough time. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to skip the part on Paul, but that's very important because, but it, it takes us in a very different direction of our conversation, which is yeah, talk definitely. about <laughs> Paul's words, our scripture, which, yeah. again, that's a, that's a lot. But I'm going to just focus on one last thing, and then we'll, we'll end it, which is... Um, it says, therefore, verse 14, beloved, since you are waiting for these. So if we know this to be true, we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth. We're waiting for the day in which righteousness dwells perfectly. We're waiting. So therefore, if we really believe that to be true, then one, be diligent to be found without spot, without spot or blemish. And that's not possible, right? Um, on our own strength. We, we can't make our conscience uh, spotless, but in Christ, we can, in other words, really it's turning to him yeah. and trusting him. Secondly, is that verse 17 for therefore beloved, knowing this before and take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. That is to say that if we really believe this to be true, well, there's a devil and there's his, his minions. And there's also um, false teachers who are trying to keep us not focused on what God is going to do eternally, but Hey, this is your best life now, or, you know, this is everything for you, you know, believe in Jesus and you'll be rich. You'll be wealthy. So there's the, uh, the Christian like sounding side of things where it tries to focus you on the moment. And then there's the non-Christian side, which is invest in this, make this much money, do this. And, everything. And we're looking at the opposite of that. Even now, it's still the same thing, which is that people are losing perhaps their, some of their investments. And so they're so overwrought with worry or concern that it's just wiping away maybe their retirement savings. Yeah. And there's a lot of worry. You know, if you, if you're, if you have your um, eyes fixed on the Lord so that you know that everything is going to burn, then even if your own house that you paid for and mortgage is done and it burnt down and you lost everything, you could still have peace. You could still be, therefore, beloved, since you're waiting for these things, be uh, diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Yeah. 
because we have peace with God, Romans 5, 1 through 2. So, but the key is we have to be, we have to take care. We have to be on our guard. If we're not on our guard, then especially the one temptation that Jesus was tempted with, with the idea that Satan said, I'll give you all this. Don't go to the cross. Just accept this. You could have comfort. You could have everything. And Jesus said, he says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through two, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He wanted something far greater. He wasn't going to settle. He was not going to take the credit card mentality of, hey, I'm going to charge everything. And then his life is ruined. You know what I mean? He wanted what was eternal. And the reward of that is forever. Yeah, It's infinitely greater than whatever this world has, which is going to burn up. So last thoughts from you regarding all that. Yeah, no, that's a lot. Um, but yeah, I think it, it is to be found in him. You know, mm. that is the thing to be in Christ. You know, um, don't be carried away with the error, you know, of, of lawless people and lose your own. I mean, it's, that is the, you know, the, the last cry of Peter to, to, to these the scattered saints, you know, I mean, to these people is don't be carried away with these false teachings. Stay in Christ, stay in the gospel, stay focused on these things. Don't let people pull you out into some other way of life, you know, some other disobedient living, you know, I mean, really, it's like, and that, you know, reading some commentaries on this, I, you know, really feel it's like there was this false teaching. It doesn't specify what it was. That was drawing people away from the gospel, drawing people away because you like, almost like what Paul says, you know, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like that type of mm-hmm. idea. And Paul says, you know, God yeah. forbid, you know, it's, he's not calling us to live a sinful way to go off the path, you know, but to, to actually to be more grounded and rooted in Christ. And like you said, that's where our righteousness is. It, it doesn't even come from me keeping the co- a command. It comes strictly from being in Christ and being mm-hmm. covered, you know, by him and staying there. And, and it's like, mm-hmm. don't be moved from that place where we're covered mm-hmm. in Christ. Don't be mm-hmm. moved in that. Because when we're in that, we, have, we, we love Christ, you know, we, and if we love him, then an outflow of that love is that we'll mm-hmm. walk that will walk mm-hmm. in the light as he is in light, that will, you know, will love our neighbors as ourselves. We will love his law and his commandments and will they'll flow from us from a mm-hmm. heart that wants to do them rather than one that's saying, Oh, if I do this, then I'll, I'm making, I'm keeping myself safe. It's like, I don't know, you know, that's that line. It's like, no, you know, yes. don't go that, even don't even want to go that way. Do it out of love, stay in Christ, you know, and repent daily, be in the gospel you know, stay in Christ, refresh your mind with the gospel and renew yourself mm-hmm. that way with Christ. And, and really that's why I, I see this as like the, the call of this is to stay in Christ. Mm-hmm. Don't be moved from it. Don't be going on, off of these teachings. Be careful of what teachings mm-hmm. were, that we're listening mm-hmm. to and the things that we hear and mm-hmm. what we allow, even the philosophies that could come in through, you know, if you binge on Netflix, we're going to get a lot of the mm-hmm. world. War. We're going to get a lot. And the, you know, spending so much time in front of the TV, we're going to get a lot thrown at us and we have to filter through that. And it's not always good. And sometimes even those things, those philosophies can get in and seep in and start to affect how we process, you know, how Mm -hmm. we look at what we own and, you know, our 401ks or finances Mm -hmm. or our homes or things. And maybe Mm -hmm. even lead us to think that this is our home, you know, that this Mm -hmm. is ours, you know. And and so it's like we to really be careful in all of those ways but really when it comes to the gospel and really when it comes to God's word to, to, to take mine and be, be diligent in that, you know, that we are, that we mm-hmm. are sure that we're found in Christ. And if yes. you haven't believed in Christ, you know, if you haven't come to him and haven't placed your faith in him, know that these things are going to end, you know, and, and come running to him. You know, he's, these arms are open wide. You know, we sing that, you know, and mm-hmm. really are open wide and he calls people to, um, mm. you know unto me everyone who's heavy laden i will give you rest come to mm-hmm. me and i you know i will and i'm gonna forgive you i want you i you know I, you know i want to take you into myself come mm-hmm. believe in my son and i you know will, mm-hmm. will set you free and give you life and you know and, and joy mm. that could be never taken away that's never going to be dissolved or destroyed it's going to be mm-hmm. you know unmatchless in its worth and and he has that for everyone that would come and believe so I believe, mm. you know, that that is this message. Yeah. Not just yeah. for us as Satan's faith, but even for 
those that are not, you know, that he is yes. um, lovingly calling, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance and faith. Amen. In him. Amen. Well, Michael, thank you so much for this week and blessing oh, yeah. us. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Blessing me just for richly, richly blessing me and oh. with your heart, your love for Jesus and for his word, which just shines through. Can I pray for us? Yes. Father, it is good to know that, that the end of our lives is but the beginning. And for those who trust in you, we are covered with the blood of the lamb and forever we will live in a place where it is indescribable the amount of joy and freedom and peace that we will have forever. No more broken relationships, no more tears, no more, no more diseases and viruses, um, no more futility and frustrations. Everything is perfectly in your, in your hands because of what Jesus did for us. So help us, O oh Lord, to know that that is our, our destiny, that is our end. When we believe in you, we have so much. We are rich. But Lord, I pray especially for those who have not placed their hope in you and their trust in you. I pray, Father, that you would help them to see that uh, they're in danger. And there is a day where there will be no more grace, no more turning back, no more repentance. Um, so I pray, Father, that today, even right now, that there will be people who would even confess their sins and yes. place their hope and trust in, in Jesus forever so that they would not face you without the blood of Christ covering them. Because as your word tells us in Hebrews 12, you are a consuming fire. And unless we are covered with the blood of the lamb, we will not be able to stand before that. But we do want to praise you because you have made us for a new heaven and a new earth. May we never forget that truth. And may that impact the way that we live today, right now the way that we view all that we have, the way that we view our relationships, our difficulties, our trials, may we turn to you. So we praise you, we bless you, we thank you, Father. And we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us this week. Have a great week of worship, and we hope to see you on Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.